Hello everyone, <clears throat> this is Pastor Gail, and I'm introducing myself that way. It's on YouTube, and hopefully uh, other people will see it as we do Bible study for Powerhouse of Faith in Ponca City, Oklahoma. And so let us begin with prayer. Father God, we thank you for this evening. We thank you, Lord, for this study. Lord, we ask that you be with us and open our hearts and mind. Father God, that we we may receive what you have for us tonight. And Lord, we just thank you right now for your love and your protection and your safety and your grace and your mercy. This I pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Hi, tonight we're going to have a good class and a uh, brief class. And tonight's message came is coming from First Thessalonians chapter five, verse sixteen. First Thessalonians chapter five, verse sixteen through eighteen. If you would turn in your Bible with me, and we all have different versions, so whatever version that um, you like reading in your Bible, it's it's okay. Amen. Um, I'm going to read from an NIV right now, and it's called uh, the NIV, the NIV Bible. Be joyful always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. I repeat this again. Be joyful always. Pray continuously. Give thanks in all circumstances for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. So my teaching coming tonight um, uh, off this verse, you know, we read the scripture and then um, I like to think of now we're going to um, operate in getting understanding of the scripture and then we want to apply the scriptures, you know, uh, because we must practice what we uh, learn and preach and teach. Amen. So <clears throat> with that being said, <clears throat> As God's children, um, we have to remember that God has a will for our lives. And even though we're faced with a lot of different um, uh, new things that are happening now or in, uh, around our lives, uh, many are trouble and many are affected by, it. and as should be, because it's something we're experiencing that is so different uh, than we ever gone through before. I never thought I'd be uh, living in a time where uh, COVID-19 was on the scene and um, this invisible virus uh, that has affected the whole world and um, killing and many people's. I mean, as of today's day, what, 82,000 um, families have lost loved ones and we, uh, are sad about it, but we know uh, that God still has a will for our lives. Amen. And um, we do know that it is appointed to man once to die and then become and come before judgment. Um, you know, God has counted the numbers of hairs in our heads. He knows when our time is up. And so, you know, we're never uh, going to be good dealing with the death of loved ones, no matter how tragic it comes, whether it's from a heart attack, uh, COVID-19 or flu or pneumonia. Uh, there are just so many things out here, cancer, that we all are dealing with uh, that have taken our loved ones. And I know I've lost many loved ones to different various sickness, and we don't know um, how God chooses to bring us home. But uh, we do have compassion and do, we are um, concerned about those families that are left. And uh, we pray God to give them strength and comfort them in their grief, um, as we all have experienced maybe at one time and several times in our lives. So with that being said, I want to continue on with word of encouragement because we must keep our focus on God. We must keep our uh, life uh, before God and not uh, lay it to the side or take it for granted or our fall to the wayside. And with this class tonight, and I'm hoping, I'm hoping the encouragement is for you to get out of out of anything that you get out of this class, uh, a study tonight, is that God does have a, a purpose and God does have a, a will for our lives. And what is God's will for your life? That's where I want to start with. What is God's 
will for your life. Well, as you read First Thessalonians five, chapter five, verse sixteen uh, through eighteen, it starts off by saying one of God's will is that we are to rejoice, and not just rejoice, but He said in evermore rejoice, evermore. Just um, I would like to also imply that God is saying to us, listen, the no matter what's going on, you know. We, we're going to rejoice in it anyway. We, we just going to be joyful always. We, we must still have the fullness of God's joy, uh, within our heart. We are still to be delighted, uh, in God. We're not delighted, uh, so much what is going around us and the things that has, uh, caught us offside and, uh, blindsided and, uh, our lives have changed forever. Uh, this is a new norm, uh, that could, COVID-19 has uh, introduced into our lives. But as I was thinking about uh, what has happened and during this duration, uh, I was prompted to write down uh, some things. And I, I just want to see if I can uh, uh, see if I can pull it up right quick. Uh, some of the things that I was being ministered in my spirit as I thought about what's going on. And, you know, are we still under God's will? And is the will of God still uh, in our lives? And are we truly, truly living up to it? You know, uh, sometimes we get slacked and um, uh, we get confused and there's conflict that we're dealing with. And we're going through a lot, even while we're trying to make sure that we're doing the right thing and uh, and watching this uh, invisible uh, uh, virus that is taking so many lives. But as I was thinking about it, uh, you know, it says that who would have thought that we'd be living in a time that virus is killing by the thousand. So we're stuck in our homes and in hopes of avoiding this inv invisible killer. Our lives as once knew, we knew has changed once again forever, just like it changed with us in 911. Um, the way America travel have changed dramatic, dramatically. Now COVID-19 changes our social gatherings, our, our visitations, our confinement to our homes. Um, we are not allowed just to roam about uh, self-preservation as in protecting our immediate family. Um, has risen by drawing from our withdrawing from our communities, socializing uh, has also caused many to walk in fear to stay home, and uh, we're in fear that you know uh, we may not never have be able to love and hug on anyone in a way that we once were because we don't know if someone is. Uh, carrying the virus. And so it causes everybody to, uh, you know, be aware of this deadly vis vicious disease. But on the same note, I do, I did notice that, uh, I wanted to add that we had a lot of reads, uh, that came out of this, uh, COVID-19 pandemic. And, um, uh, one of the things, if you would uh, bear with me for a minute, because I'm on, I want to look it up on my iPad and I, I put it on my phone and I just need to pull it up right quick. Uh, that I thought was very enlightening, uh, something that, that was affecting us during this. And I started thinking about how this virus got us rethinking, uh, everything, um, um, from what we're experiencing. So I can't get to it uh, right now because uh, um, it was there and I put it in a way that I could really uh, pull it up. But as these phones uh, does, it, it recalibrate. Um, okay, here it is. Coronavirus. Uh, let's look at the re's. I would like to put the re, R-E, in, in before co COVID-19, coronavirus, if you would say. Because as I got to thinking, everyone, um, people of God, about as we meditating and praying and talking to God, it was like uh, it causes us to think of many things. Like while we were, uh, while we were in uh, this isolation period, it made us to remember how our, our past, meaning just a couple of months is considered our past, all right? You know, a day ago is a past. But it made us think about how we was just living 
and remembering how we could just go out to a restaurant and how we can go out and eat. Yes, we, we could do that, right? Um, we have to rethink now how are we going to live, you know, uh, when we're going back to church, we have to rethink how to go back to church and how to stay out distancing and social distancing and how to wear the mask. And we have to rethink that we we have to we have to reinvent where some of us are are reinventing ourselves. I mean, social media is as fired up, TikTok and everything that uh, it has opened doors to people to create and 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 they're seeing themselves in, in a whole different way uh, because of this coronavirus is causing us to rethink and reinvent and we're resetting and we're we're learning how to reuse what we have and we're being resaturated uh with a, a lot of things that we have to make adjustment we're refreshing ourselves because we have to be home a lot we we're rebuilding ourselves because uh we're not going back the way we were before uh uh, we're reconnecting with people that we hadn't reconnected with before. We are re making ourselves, you know, we make ourselves up and we are uh, re remaking, we remodel our uh, living rooms and homes and we, uh, we, we re reunited with loved ones that we lost contact with. So even out of this bad thing uh, that's killing everyone, COVID-19, as the word of Thessalonians 5 say, with God in us, and God is our Lord and Savior, and God is still on the throne, and we're still trusting God to, to see us through. God said, Re rejoice. Rejoice the evermore. Rejoice. I know... It may be hard for many of you to think like that. Or to many of you may be struggling with that because we're we have lost and we've seen so many people have gone and we have had personal family members, uh, uh, distant relatives that have passed on. But joyful is showing God. We're expressing to God as uh, our joyfulness is with our looks. You know, we don't want to look down and out. As a body of Christ during this pandemic, uh, we don't want to forget that God is still our source. Uh, Jesus still died for us and Jesus still loves us. And God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. We are to rejoice evermore, evermore when we're reflecting, reflect. See, another word, reflecting back on what God has done and been in our lives. We're still there. We're still reflecting. We are expressing our actions. Uh, many of us are are rethinking our lives when we've been home. Have I? What good can have I been doing? How can I be a better Christian? How can I serve God more? How um, I'm still reading my Bible. I'm studying. I'm, I'm missing the fellowship, but I, I still have to. Uh, re be joyful. Uh, many people are depressed in their home. You all don't know that, but people were committing suicide and people that don't know Christ committing suicide. So we are the salt of the earth as the body of Christ. We are to continue to encourage and uh, as we're uh, reinventing re ourselves, encouraging ourselves, we have to get rid of that uh, thinking that is sometimes not the greatest thinking of. You know, uh, when we're looking at the news and the politics, sometimes we have to push away from that because it's truly bothering us. And uh, it, it's so much negativity. Uh, but we don't want to become so numb that we are not being compassionate about what's going on and how we can be a help. And so uh, showing God in our actions that how we're rejoicing by showing what we can do and Showing in our speech um, how much we love our sisters and brothers and we love our neighbors. We we have to be conscious of that in our speech that we're not speaking down on anyone. Um, we don't know what's going on. It's not a time to uh, speak animosity uh, or hate. Uh, jealousy or uh, or anything that is not a good in, in a time like this at 
No, God said rejoice evermore, no matter what we're doing. Rejoice always, always. You know, we pull joy out of that. The joy of the Lord is our strength. We don't want to lose our strength. We can't afford to lose our strength. And so the joy of the Lord is our strength. Let our faith show it. Let our actions show it um, in, all our, in all that we do. Because Jesus is alive and well, and he is our source. Amen. And then the number two, he said, pray always. Uh, that's the same way. Pray continually. I know sometimes we pray and we pray and then we might skip a day or two or another day. Or we'll pray when we really got some bad news or, you know, there's sometimes we're so selective in our prayer. All of us are guilty that all have sinned and fall, fallen short of the glory of God. It's not a time that God want us pointing fingers. I pray, but you don't pray as much as I pray. God doesn't need us to do that. God is love. God gave us a model prayer that he taught his disciples. Oh, Father, which art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. He broke it down for us to know if we forgot how to pray, or if we even say, I pray, but I don't pray right, or I don't know how, and every believer, you can pray. It's in you. When you accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, your prayer was already in you. Once you open up your mouth, the Bible said, how can you pray when you don't know how to pray? But God gave us his Holy Spirit. And our Holy, the Holy Spirit is what teaches us how to pray. Because he said, we don't know what we should pray for, but the Spirit of God that is within us help us to pray. Sometimes I just get into prayer and, I, and I'm listening and I'm hearing myself and and. I'm going, wow, even me, or I can hear what I'm saying. I'm like, is that me? I, You know, there's times when I haven't prayed like that, and I know immediately I don't know what to pray about, but the Holy Spirit knew. And because I let myself be open to his spirit, I let the Holy Spirit speak for me. Sometimes you're speaking in tongues. Sometimes you may want to pray and speak in your tongue because it's the unknown language, but it's speaking to God and the Holy Spirit is speaking on your behalf. So God wants us to pray. Don't, don't let anything bother you so much. Don't let you get so angry and so disappointed that you forget to pray or you don't want to pray. I heard so many times that, Pastor, I don't feel like praying. I'm so whipped down. I'm so disappointed. I, I just don't. God don't even want you to pretend that everything is all right with you. You don't have to pretend. Sometimes as believers, we try to put on this facade like we're so big and we got it going on and we don't have to do that. God just wants you to be real. Just be real with God. If you're feeling down, you can pray about that to God. God, I'm not in the best mood today. You feel betrayal? Pray always, God say. God, I feel betrayed. My best friend or someone whom I trust and love just betrayed me. You feeling lonely? Pray always. God, I'm feeling lonely. I'm single. I would like a husband or a wife. God, I, I would love to have a companion to talk to. You feeling used and abused? You can pray. See, your prayers will change things. But what I notice about prayer, prayer changes you. See, it's hard when I get to praying to come back out of my prayer life Still angry, still blaming, pointing things. When I come out of my prayer life, from so spending that time, I come out with a humble spirit. Because when I go before God, 
and I feel his presence, I begin to weep. I begin to feel sorry for what's wrong with me. I begin to feel that. And so I stop. So I want you, my brothers and sisters, to understand You can pray always about everything. Pray the evermore. Pray continually. Pray with joy. Watch your speech. Pray. Watch your action. Don't look so sad. Don't look so miserable like you're hopeless. But express the joy. Your expressing your joy will bring joy to someone. Have you ever run into someone that just looks so pitiful, but they look at you and you got that smile and you're just glowing and they're um, you just touch them. They may have passed you and you didn't even know it. And they're going, wow, that person was so pleasant looking. Because the joy of the Lord is real when it's in your heart. The last and not least things. God is telling us, give thanks in all circumstances. People of God, we got to thank God always. No, we don't want to just thank God because something bad has happened. We thank in God that he's still with us. We thank in God that we have someone to turn to while we're being faced with this circumstances, uh, this situation. We're thanking God that I wouldn't have known how to got to get through it, but God, I'm thanking God that you're giving me the strength I need to get through it. I'm thanking God I would have lost my mind, but I'm thanking you, God, because you kept me stored in my right mind. I'm thanking God that I would have lost it, but thank you, God, you held my mouth shut that I did not speak uh, in a way that would have been offensive or uh, uh, be troubling to someone. I thank you, God. Hallelujah. So much to thank God. I thank you, God, that I almost went back to my old ways. And I'm thanking you, God. Come on now. Come on now. I know you're shouting out there. Because it's so much to thank God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Because we're surrounded by people all the time. Don't know who's got the coronavirus. But thank you, God, that I am in health. Thank you, God. That you're protecting me and my family. Thank you, God. That's a devout petition. When we're thanking God. That's We're worshiping in the same manner. Thanking God. We're having a communion with God. It's a, see, pra- prayer is a formula that God gave us to use to communicate with him. But thanksgiving is expressing gratitude. <laughs> Come on now. I know you're shouting over there. Appreciation. Come on now. We're appreciating God. Come on. I know you feel it. We're acknowledging that we're God. We're acknowledging you, God. God, you are everything to me. God, I don't want, I cannot even begin to fathom life without you. I don't know about you, but I can. I need God. I love God. I love him so much. That even when I don't think I'm in, no one is loving me, it makes me feel good to know that if nobody else loved me and respect me, God loves me. He died for me. He sent his only son to die for me. So I'm grateful for that. I'm thankful to God. I'm not going to keep looking at the circumstance of the situation. They're going to come. They're not going to stop. But we can't stop either. We can't stop thinking, God. For all that he does. Sometimes we're in church. We don't even want to get up and give a testimony. Because we're sitting back in the seats. In the pews thinking. I don't know what to thank God for. Everything went bad today. Everything was bad. All me and my husband was uh, not speaking today. And you know I walked into church. And someone looked at me strange. And you know somebody rolled my eyes. And you know what. I'm not feeling this today. Uh, because, you know, nobody doesn't know. I just got a bad call and, you know, my friends are angry with me. Or I just, Come on, people, God. We got to thank God through it all. Through it all. Through it all. I got to, listen, I can't. I can thank you for all that you do for me over and over and over and over. I can thank you for your gifts. I can thank you for everything you do for me. 
guess what? Thanking you is thanking God because I'm thanking God that he allowed you. He allowed you to, you allow him to be, let him use you to be a blessing to me, to be a blessing to someone. I thank you, God, you allowing me to be a blessing. God, it's not always about me. Oh, me, whoa, whoa, Lord, it's me, everybody, you know. And what I do for you, God, it seemed like nobody appreciating, Lord. You know, we do have them woes, but guess what? We're thinking, God, through our woe woes. When we get a bow bow, you know, it used to feel good when your, your mom or your dad come and say, oh, that's a bow bow. Mm -hmm, let me kiss that. Bow. Come on now, feel the kissing of God. Yeah, you got a bow bow. Yeah, you got wounded. Yeah, you got. I'm kissing you. I'm loving on you because I'm God. I'm the creator. I'm your father. I love you. I love you so much. I sent Jesus to die for your sin. I love you. You got a lot to be thankful about. A lot. Don't look at the circumstances. Don't feel like because of what happened, the mistake you made. So you made a mistake. You can repent. So your attitude stinks. You can, you can pray about it. So you've been misused and abused. You can talk to God about it. You can be joyful at the same time. It's not in the circumstances, but your joy is that... Thank God, hallelujah, I got a Lord and a Savior who's so dear to me that when I am feeling this way, when I just rock and think about the Lord and the joy of the Lord is my strength and the joy come back and the song is in my heart and all of a sudden now everything that was going haywire and felt haywire and felt like it never was, all of a sudden I got a new attitude because I'm thanking you, Jesus. So as I close tonight, what is God's will for your life? You read it, and I went over it. But let's go back to it one more time. Because God's got a plan and a purpose. He said, rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. Pray always about everything. Always about everything. And to everything gives thanks to God. This is the will of God and Christ Jesus concerning you. For this is God's will for you and Christ Jesus concerning you. What's God's will for your life? Rejoice evermore. Pray always. Hmm. And be thankful even in your circumstances. God is good. God is great. God is love. Continue to pursue God's greatness within you. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You know, Jesus told me to tell everyone he is coming soon. And sometimes I don't say that every day. But when it comes in my mind, I say, Jesus said to let everyone know he's coming soon. That is our hope, our joy to see our king, to know one day we're going to be with him. So lift up your bow down heads. Let the joy return back to you during this pandemic. Do what you're supposed to do. That is right. Forgive, love, care for everyone. God's got a will for your life. And I just explained it to you. May God bless you. May God keep you and watch over you and your loved ones wherever they are. May he build a, plan, a, a hedge of protection around them. May he lift up your bow down head and may he bring comfort to your spirit that after this message, when you get up, you're giving him the shout. You're giving him praise. You're worshiping him because now you understand God has a will for your life. Love you. God bless you. 
See you soon.